So, dear Arab community, UNL faculty and students, marhaba and welcome to the Big Arabic Day of 2024, the annual day of the Arabic Studies program. Every year, we like to meet with our dear community friends, colleagues, and students to celebrate the growth of our program. This year is very special to us because we are celebrating the Big Arabic Day by recognizing parents, mentors, and community leaders who have made a significant difference in students' lives. My name is Amani Al Hamidi. I'm a second year neuroscience psychology major, and I'm an Arabic studies program ambassador in 2024. As an Arabic student who has taken two of the brand new Arabic courses this year, whether it's the heated debates in global Islam to eating mabrushe and drinking Gulf Karak in Arab 314, I can say with confidence that this year's growth is worth celebrating. Now, before starting this event, I would like to acknowledge and honor the peoples whose homelands now reside the campuses and programs of the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, a land-grant institution. The Pawnee, Ponca, Otto, Missouri, Omaha, Dakota, Lakota, Arapaho, Cheyenne, Ka peoples, as well as the relocated Ho-Chunk, Iowa, Sac and Fox peoples. Let us recognize the legacies of violence, displacement, and survival that bring us here today. Before we celebrate our incredible parents, community leaders, and mentors, we would like to remember the parents, the community leaders, and the mentors in the rest of the world that oftentimes go forgotten. Please remember to send prayers for peace in the Arab world and for everyone on earth, regardless of their faith, ethnic, and cultural background. But aside from the prayers, Let's always make sure to be moving and acting in any way we can as individuals to help suffering people from afar. Moving and acting looks different person to person, but make sure that in the future, we can look back at ourselves and know that we did what we could with the seemingly little amount of power that we hold. That was my nice way of saying stop eating at McDonald's or else. <laughs> Let's acknowledge and thank all of the heroes who made this event possible. A special thanks to Dr. Nora Peterson and Susan J. Rosowski, Associate Professor of French and Chair of Modern Languages and Literatures. Dr. Joy Castro, Willa Cather, Professor of English and Ethnic Studies and Director for the Institute of Ethnic Studies. We would also like to thank the Selection Committee for the time and effort they invested to finalize the nominations. Dr. Luis Rosa, Dr. Lori Dance, Dr. Abla Hassan, Dr. An Angel Hinzo, and Hassan El Mukhrik. Our gratitude also goes to Arab Studies Program Ambassadors for 2024. Danny Vinton, Rusul Al Bawi, Noor Al Naimi, Yasser Al Mutawa'a, and me. We would also like to thank our Big Arabic Day volunteers Ahmed Hussein Ali Al Fazari, Mustafa Aliwa, Rafif Badr Nasser, Ambu Saidi, Sire Kuli, Emma Haith, Ma'ab Shogar, and Diana Hassan. As always, special thanks to Mike Cam, the video producer and electronic media specialist at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. It's no secret that our parents, professors, and peers are the very reason we are still standing here as college students, or at least the reason I'm still surviving. Personally, I'm not going to pretend that I didn't have to ask Dr. Hessen how to pronounce nearly all of the names I just read to you. It's true that there's some questions Google won't be able to answer, and every time I get those kinds of questions, there has always been someone on campus who has an answer. That's the reason that regularly thanking our community is the only proper thing to do. As a reminder, please stay with us till the end of the event for 100 traditional Arabic gifts from the program. First, I would like to introduce Dr. Abla Hassan, Associate Professor of Practice and Arabic Studies Program Coordinator. Let's welcome Dr. Hassan. Thank you so much, Amani. Thank you all for joining us for another gathering, for another annual Big Arabic Day. As always, we gather to celebrate the growth of the Arabic Studies program. And as I always share with you, I'm happy to share all the updates, the, the awesome updates with you. The Arabic Studies program continue to serve our communities in Lincoln, not only in Lincoln, in Kearney and in Omaha as well. The Arabic Studies program is a state program now. And the two, uh, first two 
years of Arabic are available online to our students in University of Omaha and University of Kearney. We already have amazing students from Omaha and we would love you to share with more students as well. More great updates from the Arabic program. We continue, as, as Amani said, we continue to offer new courses offered in, in English about the Arabic culture. And last year we offered for the very first time Introduction to Quranic Arabic, a unique course, a one-of-a-kind course in our campus. And uh, the, the fact, uh, and, and I have some of the students who, who are taking the course with me here, and the mere fact that we had almost a full course from the very first time it was offered tell us volumes about your interest, interest in, the, in the subject. We're adding a new section as well to Arab 101. Already the first section is, is full and we have a long waiting list. Uh, I have also a surprise to share with you. Our awesome Arabic Studies uh, program ambassadors, they held five interviews with parents, leaders, and mentors from the community and people who impacted our students. Uh, like you, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for the surprise. I haven't uh, checked the videos yet. They're due tonight. Students wait for the due date, you know, to, to submit something, although it's based like all volunteer work. And I was told, I can't wait to hear the feedback of the, of the community, of leaders, mentors, and parents. I was told that some of the interviews are held in English, but many are, are held all in Arabic, and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, thank you all for, uh, for your support. Uh, the students, faculty, administration at UNL and the community, uh, I'm gonna say you are our strength and you are our izwa. I wonder how many of you know the meaning of izwa. I know it's a, it's a word heavy in, in culture, in Arabic culture. Uh, some of you are shaking your head, some of you are looking at me like this. You know, I, I know I'm not supposed to give you a quiz or assignment, uh, but I'm a teacher and you know, as usual, for the first person who's going to get me the right answer, I'm going to go with the typical uh, prize, you know, a prize of Mama slash Professor Hassan. You're going to get the chocolate. So after the event, meet with me, get me the meaning of Izwa, the exact meaning of Izwa, and you get my chocolate. I, I can't uh, live without uh, acknowledging all people who helped us uh, grow, I want to acknowledge my chair, Dr. Nora Peterson, for her continuous support of the community and the Arabic Studies program. I'd like also to acknowledge my friend, my boss, and my colleague, Dr. Lori Dance. Uh, and I know you told me not to say this, but I have to share. I can't get credit for this year's idea. It all was based on a morning phone call from Dr. Lori Dance. So as the coordinator of the Arabic Studies program and the coordinator of the Big Arabic Day for 11 years now, I look all the time for new inspiration, new ideas. And it was based just on a morning phone call. I was having my coffee and Dr. Lori shared with me this amazing idea about recognizing leaders, mentors, and parents who impacted our students. Recognizing parents and mentors is a big deal in the Arab culture, and I immediately fall in love with the idea, so thank you so much, Dr. Lori, for that. Finally, I'd like also to acknowledge uh, uh, and thank uh, Dean uh, uh, Thomas for joining us today. I know it's not a surprise to many of my students anymore. Forgive me, I couldn't stop bragging about it after you assured you're going to be joining us to welcome the Arab community to campus. Thank you so much, Dean Thomas, for that. And finally, don't leave early. It's a shame in the Arabic culture not to treat your guests very uh, 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 in a kind way, in a generous way. I've got you, along with Dr. Lori Dance, 100 uh, gifts, traditional Arabic gifts. Uh, and I need to acknowledge Zane, who held everything to my office as well. It was heavy, we're still like in pain because of that. But guys, hopefully all of you, you will leave today with a gift, a uh, traditional Arabic gift. I wish you, uh, you enjoy the, the rest of the event. Stay with us until the rest of the event. Thank you so much. Now, I would like to welcome Dr. Lori Janelle Dance, Associate Professor of Sociology and Ethnic Studies and Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Coordinator in the College of Arts and Sciences. 
In the Arab community, Dr. Dance is well known for standing alongside and supporting the efforts to advocate for the integration of the Arabic language classes into Lincoln Public High Schools, along with Dr. Abla Hassan, Dr. Nora Peterson, and Ustad Mohammed Al Najim. Let's welcome Dr. Dance. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. So I am so happy to be here. This is another event that is in part funded, in part by the Forcibly Removed Project. Again, this is a project where we try to understand the experiences and respect the knowledge of persons who have histories of forcible geographical relocation. Um, and we had planned to do that more broadly, but we ended up working mostly with Arabic heritage communities, and we mean by that people for whom Arabic language or cultural practices are um, central or important, and then indigenous or native communities. So those are the communities that we've ended up working with. Um, and I know last year when we had the event, and we had so many important people here, um, where we talked about Arabic in the Lincoln Public Schools. Is in four schools now? Three. Three? Okay. Four high, three high schools now. Um, that event was also video recorded and now has over 9,500 views. So we're hoping that this also gets a lot of views. Um, and I just want to say, actually, this was not my idea. There were parents. There were parents, there were two parents in the indigenous heritage community, and then I ran it by a couple of parents in the Arabic heritage community, um, and they wanted us to do something that would allow us to start honoring mentors, and the mentors come from various communities who are important to Arabic heritage students and indigenous heritage students. So I wish I could take the credit. But then Dr. Dr. Abla and I got together and we kind of tried to figure out what we could do. The Forcibly Removed Project works that way. When community members make a request, I try to see if there's something we can do, right? Um, it's a grassroots up project. Now, in regard to that project, if you look to the back over there, you see, Ella, can you wait? <laughs> There's a timeline on the wall. And the timeline goes from right to left, in the Arabic way, um, with the most recent events on the left. And these are general events, historical events, that impact persons from Middle East, North, um, North Africa, MENA region, but who are here, right? So we have some general information on that timeline, but we want to localize it. We want you, before you leave tonight, to please go, and we have paper on the table in the back, so we don't want you to write on the timeline, but if we have the 19, anything from the 1800s, we have green paper, and you would write um, the event, the date, and what the impact was. Um, for the 1900s, we got yellow paper, and then for the 2000s, we got orange paper, and all those instructions are in, are in the back as well, and Ella can let you know if you forget. We wanna know what we're missing, what's missing on this timeline, and we want to know, we want you to add what you could add, not your birthday, although I know for some of you, your birthdays had great impacts on your parents' and your family's lives. But we're thinking more about things that happened, and they could have happened outside of the US, but they had impact on communities here in Lincoln. So we're trying to localize the timeline. And if you could just add one event, that would be great. That would be great. And then we wanna add those things, and so you can see the difference between a general timeline for the Middle East, North, uh, Africa, Americans, um, um, history, and then something that's more local. Now, you all received flyers about the Arabic program. I just want to remind you all to hold on to those flyers. I also received one, so hold on to those flyers. And also, I'm asking that you save this date, and this is June 9th, 2024, um, from 12.15 to 5 p.m., at the Unitarian Church of Lincoln, we're gonna have the Good Vibes Community Gathering. It's gonna be the second one. We had one back in 2022, where we came together 
Arabic heritage communities and indigenous heritage communities for good food. We had the food catered from both traditions. Um, for fun activities, we did henna hand painting. We also had storytelling and beading. Um, and we had some other fun activities and gift giving. So it's a tradition in both cultures that you feast people and you gift people. Right, and then again, the project allows me to do it because it's a grassroots up project. So we're asking you to hold that date, June 9th, 2024, Unitarian Church of Lincoln, 6300 A Street. You'll start to see um, flyers and things going up. Now we won't turn around anyone. We won't turn away anyone who comes, but this is particular in invitation for persons with Arabic language or cultural background or for whom Arabic language or culture is important in native and indigenous cultures. But again, we won't turn around anyone, turn away anyone. And the last thing that I want to say is we're going to honor people. You're going to get, they're going to get certificates. They're also going to get honoraria. But to get the honoraria, you have to see me. So don't leave. If you get a certificate, don't leave before you see me so I can make sure you get your honoraria, your honorarium. Okay, I think that's it. Is that everything, Ella? Okay, thank you. Next, I'm delighted to introduce Dr. William G. Thomas, a distinguished American historian Associate Dean for Research and Graduate Education in the College of Arts and Sciences, and Catherine Engel, Chair in the Humanities and Professor of History. Let's welcome Dr. Thomas. Uh, thank you very much uh, for, the, for the warm welcome, and thank you, Professor Hassan and Professor Dance, for inviting me and for uh, all the work that uh, uh, many others have put into this event tonight, this great celebration, this, this welcoming and recognition of mentors and parents. Um, and I think we, we all are shaped by our professors. We're certainly shaped by our teachers and our classes from high school, from grade school, really through, through university. But we're shaped by our parents and our mentors in such powerful ways. And recognizing them as you're doing here tonight and as, as we are doing here tonight is a great honor. Um, to, to see the work that they have done and to see what they've done in your lives. So I want to welcome you. I want to welcome you to campus. I want to welcome you to the university. And I want to welcome you to the College of Arts and Sciences. We're glad you're here. And I want to speak briefly to, uh, I know we have high school students in our audience, right? Or in, uh, in our broader audience, in our communities, who are thinking about the university thinking about uh, college and might be here tonight to learn more about what happens at a great university like the University of Nebraska. This university and the College of Arts and Sciences, and I think you've heard from, from faculty and you see it here tonight, prioritizes inclusive excellence, bringing people together from diverse cultures, from diverse places around the world. This university is a gateway to the world for our students. And we take that responsibility seriously and to heart. And when I, when I say inclusive ex excellence, what do we mean? What, do, what are we talking about? I think it's the idea, quite simply, that the pursuit of knowledge, the pursuit of knowledge in any field, requires inclusion. We can't pursue knowledge without including everyone in that pursuit and without bringing diverse perspectives to bear on the world. In any field of study, mine, history, biology, mathematics, philosophy, language, chemistry, we are, we are pursuing inclusive excellence through all of those fields. The College of Arts and Sciences, and I think you get a, a sense of it here tonight, is the broadest, most diverse college in the university. There are 500 faculty, 230 staff members in the College of Arts and Sciences alone. There are 3,000 
500 undergraduate students and there's 750 graduate students in the College of Arts and Sciences here at Nebraska. We have 29 majors and 48 minors. And so when I think about what's happening here on campus every day and how powerful it is in the lives of our students, and it's, I can say for myself, it's powerful in the lives of faculty, we are transformed too by having the privilege, the honor to work with you. Um, our lives are enriched and deepened and profoundly changed by our students. And we appreciate that every single day I come to this campus and I appreciate the fact that I'm entrusted with and able to work with so many students and help them in their lives. But one of the things that is happening on this campus that I think uh, uh, we need to just remember is the value of the combination of all the research that's happening on this campus. When I say we're pursuing knowledge, we're pursuing knowledge in every one of these fields in ways that open up enormous opportunities for our students. And the great opportunity at Nebraska is to really be involved in those research opportunities. Last year, just in the College of Arts and Sciences, we generated in external funding over $50 million in research funding in one year. That, those funds are being spent on student research and student, student activity. And so every year, students come to this great university to work in labs, to get direct hands-on experience in our classrooms with research led by our great professors here tonight, and to build their own expertise, working side by side with faculty and other students. But they wouldn't have gotten here without the great mentorship and the great teaching and the great parenting of so many in this audience tonight and that we're celebrating tonight. So thank you for being here tonight. For those of you who are thinking about the University of Nebraska, there's a place for you here. We want you here at the University of Nebraska and in the College of Arts and Sciences. I guarantee you, your life will be transformed by being here and our society and our great university will be transformed by your very presence on our campus. And so thank you for uh, all that you've done and uh, I'm eager to hand out the certificates later and participate in this. Thank you very much. Thank you to our faculty for all of these very heartfelt words. Uh, now it's time to share with you the names of our winners of the Parent Mentor Recognition Award for 2024. I ask winners to join the stage to receive their certificates. Also, I ask Dr. Thomas, Dr. Dance, Dr. Hassan, Professor Hassan Saleh, and all attending Arabic program ambassadors to join the stage. First, Hassan al Mukhrik. He is a PhD student in the Department of Political Science and a graduate research assistant in the Department of Sociology. Hassan was described as a very helpful professor who spoke to students more like a mentor rather than an instructor. Students also expressed their appreciation for the Arabic conversation table hour, which was a great chance to practice and become more comfortable speaking Arabic in conversational format. I'd like to add that it was Hassan who taught me that the word kilish in Iraqi Arabic that I tend to use in every single sentence is in fact not formal Arabic. Thank you, Hassan. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, thank you. Second, we have Carson Fisher. Unfortunately, she could not attend today, but she is an academic advisor at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. The nomination... She is here. Yay, she is here. The... Yeah. Clap, clap, clap. <laughs> 
The nomination highly praised Carson for her encouragement and graciousness, which truly made a difference. She even enrolled me into my first Arabic class, the nomination says. Carson was even described as a fantastic recipient of this award. Congratulations. Now third, we have Marwa Afi. She is a PhD student in the Institute of Agriculture and Natural Resources at UNL. Marwa was described as a professor whose dedication to her students goes above and beyond. Her act of kindness, as the nomination says, is what fueled my motivation to continue studying Arabic. Congratulations. Yay, doctor. <laughs> doctor Marwa Afi, sorry about that. <laughs> Fourth now, we have uh, Professor Hassan Saleh. So as the nominee or the person who nominated them said, he has been an invaluable asset in my Arabic language journey. He has gone above and beyond in his role as a teacher by providing me with patience, encouragement, and even technical help with, with my computer issues. As someone completely new to Canvas, Microsoft products, Hassan Saleh's guidance was instrumental in helping me navigate the challenges of learning a new language through these platforms. And fifth, we have Atkins Richards, RD of Eastside Suites. He is always open to answering any questions I have or helping me with difficult situations. He is hilarious and knowledgeable, personable and professional, and always makes an effort to let me know how appreciated I am. Congratulations. Yeah, he is not here today. Congrats to all of our community members whose devotion, passion, and hard work always deserves to be recognized. So while five appreciated people are walking away from this event with awards, you are all also our community, and we have gifts for you before you leave. So our lovely ambassadors very smoothly and gracefully put this all together for you beforehand. So.